Okay, so today we've got a very special trip. Um, it's going to be about a five-hour round trip, and uh, we're going to stop at a couple of very scenic places, hopefully, and <clears throat> excuse me, and then uh, going to pick up a special, very special package. I hope you enjoy. Hang tight. So one of the first places we're stopping on our trip, uh, we're going over the Cascade Mountain Range. And one of the first places that we're stopping is uh, a viewpoint for Mount, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> is a, uh, a viewpoint for Mount Washington. And uh, this used to be uh, a very beautiful uh, uh, v vista, very v beautiful vista, but several years ago a lightning strike happened up here in the Cascades and uh, the forest went and you can see that right here. Now you can see out there all of those sticks pointing up from out of the out of the ground and then there is Mount Washington. And you used to be able to come up here and it, no matter what time of uh, year, if it was sunny, it's, it was pretty pristine, a great view. Mount Washington used to be, uh, used to have snow on it all year long. But things are changing. Um, and the last couple of years because of the wildfires that we've had both here in Oregon and uh, all along the west coast, uh, it's not so pristine anymore. And I think that the reason why uh, this isn't a, a real clear view is because I, I believe we're, we're getting some of the smoke from the California wildfires. We've had wildfires here in Oregon uh, already this year. But I don't think, I think they're far enough away and um, upwind from uh, where they're happening. And so I think this haze is from the California wildfires. And I'm not sure I can get it, but you can see down there, that's Subtle Lake. But it's time for us to get back on the road because uh, we have to go pick somebody up. So scenic stop number two on our trip is Sahali Falls. Uh, it's, as I'm looking around here, it says it's the, an ageless attraction. Native peoples use the falls quite a bit. Um, the, the falls diverge into two or three parts as it descends, depending on um, how much the water flow is. So let's take a walk down there and see what it looks like. It's uh, pretty warm this morning. Um, right now where I am at, it's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. You can begin to hear the river and the falls. And there is Sahali Falls.
at the height of the day, the sun comes right over the top here, and um, there's a multitude of rainbows that are created uh, between where I'm standing now and the falls itself. pretty. This place is uh, along U.S. Highway 126 between uh, Bend, Oregon and Eugene, Oregon. Locals here, we call it the, the McKinsey River Highway. So Another scenic stop on our journey across the Cascades is Kusha Falls. And uh, it's about a quarter of a mile or so below Sahali Falls. Both are worth the stop, trust me. says uh, old meets new this place is where old meets new across the river the western cascades began erupting into being 40 million years ago the oldest rocks on the Willamette National Forest are found here lava flows that Sahali and Kusha pour over today however are geologic babies at 3,000 years before the present each layer is a different mountain building flow Dissolved minerals and gases vary with each eruption, bestowing each with unique distinctive attributes. So this is Kusha Falls. I don't know if you can see it or not in this video, but it's really smoky on the western side of the Cascades. So that, um, that theory that I had that it was California wildfires that was making it hazy on the other side, on the east of the slope, was incorrect. There, there's a pretty good fire here and on, on this side of the Cascades. Uh, it makes it uncomfortable to even breathe. I thought those waterfalls were good. I always like stopping there when I'm coming over the mountains, but um, they weren't the main reason. So it's time to show you, folks, I'd like you to meet Bailey. Hi, Bailey. Come here. Come on, bud. There he is. There's Bailey. Yeah. He's uh, pretty mellow, aren't you? You're pretty mellow, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Get used to that beard, because you and I are going to spend a lot of time together. So, time to go home and introduce him to Farley and Val.
I got Bailey home. Here he is. Say hi, Bailey. Say hi. You don't know what that is yet, do you? Get used to it, kid. He's uh, He's been doing pretty well. Um, he's scoped the entire inside of the house out. He had one little accident. We're getting him to get used to going outside um, to do his business, but part of the problem is that uh, today was 97 degrees, so it was super hot. In any case, uh, he and I are becoming good buddies, aren't we? Are we good buddies? Huh? Yeah, look at that. Oh, you, you, hi. Hi, how are you? You all right there? Yeah, okay. All right. So there's Bailey. He's home. Here's the interesting thing. Um, you might be wondering why I got a Maltese. Uh, uh, I grew up having Labrador Retrievers, uh, German Shepherds, um, what else, uh, Cocker Spaniels, and uh, out of the blue, Val brought home a Maltese, and uh, I was going, what, you know? I don't need a dog accessory or an accessory dog. However, uh, after she left, uh, the dog and I became really good. I mean, her name was Baby. Again, not my name. But in any case, uh, Baby and I became really good friends. She lived to be 19. Actually, she was one week shy of her 19th birthday. So I'm pretty sure that Bailey here is going to outlive me. Uh, but here in our, uh, the backyard, Baby is buried right there, uh, right in front of Buddha. So um, yeah, uh, I, what I found out was that Maltese are really cool dogs, even though they look like an accessory. Now I know what some of you might be thinking, why didn't we go after a rescue dog? The fact is, is that I did. I, I looked for six months and during the pandemic, pets went out really fast, especially small dogs. Um, we live in a um, retirement community that has very strict rules on what dogs can be in the community and small dogs are basically it no large dogs and so um we couldn't find one so that's why i got bailey but uh you should also know that we have another dog farley this is farley and i think farley helps us do our part farley is <laughs> much older and he's he's not happy that we have a new dog yet but the other thing you should know about farley is that farley is blind uh, he's diabetic so he has to have insulin twice a day just like other diabetics and get this he's allergic to meat have you ever heard of a dog who's allergic to meat but we've had him for about, I don't know, six or seven years. And um, he's part of the family. I, I hope he gets used to our new addition. Right now, he's not. You're not, are you? Yeah, okay. <laughs> So we're camping, and you remember that nice, clean, white little puppy I picked up? It's been camping too. <laughs> he's, uh, he's not so white and clean anymore. He's a ball of energy and a ball of confusion all at the same time.
when any young camper comes home, the first thing his parents want to have happen is for him to take a bath. And that's what's happening after Bailey's very first camping trip. So get ready. So he's all clean. He's glad to be home where he can run free without a leash. And um, he's real happy you stuck around. He'd be even happier if you would hit the like button down below there. Or also, you can leave any comments. Be happy to read and respond. And if you feel like it, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell to get notified if you've subscribed. So thumbs up, and we'll see you next week. Right, Bailey? Right? Really? <laughs>